Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of Cruella. This movie is directed by Craig Gillespie, who previously directed The Finest Hours and I, Tanya. This movie stars Emma Stone and Emma Thompson. Cruella is about the beloved, the infamous, the evil character known as Cruella de Vil. But in this film, it's an origin story. She starts out as Estella, a young girl that doesn't really have a home, doesn't have a place after some tragic events, and she meets two criminals, and then she gets a job at a fashion agency, and she fulfills her destiny. Now, going into this movie, I was a little nervous because we had two live-action Cruella de Vil movies with Glenn Close that was done phenomenally, and then the Maleficent movies came out, and I started to notice a pattern that Disney wanted to go for these live-action remakes or these origin stories where you take these, you know, these bad guys, these villains, and you give them origins that make you see them in a different light. After Maleficent came out, I was like, what's next? A misunderstood Captain Hook or, you know, a depressed Ursula? What's next? And so we got Cruella, and I was pleasantly surprised by this film, mostly because of Emma Stone and Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson plays the Baroness as like, like what Cruella would become. She played this character so well as just like this evil woman that didn't care about anyone or anything. So much to the point where she'd walk into a room, she would take a look at someone and just throw something at them. Or she'd smoke a cigarette for a second and then throw it at someone. Like she was disregarded people for the humanity and what they were. They just saw them as disposable objects as, you know, a means to an end, so to speak. Now, this movie <clears throat> is a lot like Solo in the sense that because we know who Estella is going to become, this movie does the one mistake of showing us everything that we come to know about this character in a short span. I had a problem with Solo because they showed us you know, Han Solo meeting Chewbacca, and Han Solo getting the Millennium Falcon, and Han Solo doing this and that. All the trademarks, all the key things <clears throat> that we familiarize and, you know, put with that character, we got with Cruella. We got Horace and Jasper. We got other items I'm not going to spoil. And we even got why she dislikes dogs, which is another kind of issue I have with this movie. And it's that because it's Disney, there are a couple dark moments and twists in this movie but they don't commit. This movie doesn't end how you think it would. Yeah, we know she's going to become Cruella de Vil, but this movie kind of has her balancing and debating on whether or not she wants to be Cruella the villain or Estella the good person. And so because this movie doesn't fully commit to one side of her character, it likes to, you know, balance the line, so to speak, we're left with an ending that makes us go, so she is a villain? And that's not what you want from a movie like this. But because it's Disney, that's why they had to do it. This movie is a lot like uh, Devil Wars Prada as well, in the fashion sense, where she gets a job at a fashion agency. She looks up to the person that runs the show who's like maniacal and, and evil, so to speak, and she kind of idolizes them but also fears them at the same time. So because this movie is like Solo, it's like Devil Wars Prada, and Emma Stone plays Cruella a lot like Harley Quinn, which I enjoyed. Uh, the movie takes place in the 70s, so there's a lot of, you know, punk rock, clash type music in the film, which is nice, but it's almost like they played that music because they wanted you to feel, they wanted you to feel a certain way as opposed to, hey, we're naturally going to put this song in this scene and let it take its course. It kind of was like, alright, we want you to get the feeling that Cruella, Estella is like, own oh, independent tough chick, so we're going to play this punk music. Um, some really good highlights of the film is, uh... Jasper is played by Joel Fry, who was previously in Yesterday. He was really good. Also, Horace, played by Paul Walter uh, Hauser. He was in Richard Jewell, but he was also in I, Tonya, and most notably, he was in Cobra Kai. He was the bigger guy with the mustache. Her two uh, henchmen, really good in this film. Uh, Mark Strong co-stars as well, and a couple other familiar faces. But because this movie set out to be a Cruella movie, and ended up with a character that seemed conflicted, I'm gonna give Cruella a B minus. The acting was really good, but it's like if you're gonna start a character on a certain trajectory, finish it there. Don't leave it up to chance. And then there's a post, there's a mid credit scene that they kind of shoehorn in there that, you know, is another one of those things where it's like, okay, so that's where I, that Cruella trademark came from, but it wasn't necessary. So the movie was enjoyable. The acting was really good. 
you know, the sets, the costume, uh, everything looked really good, but the character was a little questionable. So until next time, guys, see you.